By the way, I have a great story for you guys. So Jeremy Stevens is getting ready to fight uh, Uriah. Now, first off, welcome back, Uriah. And second off, nothing new here for Jeremy Stevens, who only takes on the hardest possible opponents you can find. But to this story, they're fighting out in Mexico City. Kane lost his world championship. Kane Velasquez, when he lost his world championship in a huge upset to Verdum, it was in Mexico City, and Kane was so tired. I mean, people call Kane cardio Kane. This guy doesn't get tired. He got so exhausted in that fight, and Verdum said, yeah, I knew this was going to happen. I got here a month ago, and I went through it. My first two weeks here were terrible. When I found out Kane was going to get in six days before the fight, I knew I was going to have a meaningful competitive advantage over him. So the fight happens, and sure enough, it was just as Verdun predicted, and Kane was shot. Okay, where does that tie into Jeremy? Jeremy said, I saw what happened to Kane. So instead of popping in on fight week and doing the usual travel, I invested in myself, went to my own expense, and moved the camp out here a month and a half ago. I thought it was interesting. I thought it was, I thought it was something relevant to the story, but I want to stay on the topic of Jeremy Stevens. Got a great story for you. A number of years ago, UFC was on Fox. I was working at Fox, and if you guys will recall, though, the Fox and their relationship with the UFC isn't the same as ESPN and their relationship, where everything is on ESPN. Absolutely everything is on one of the platforms. Fox would even call it, like, UFC on Fox. It'd be a special name, a special night. It was different. It wasn't, you know, UFC 141 and UFC 142. It wasn't like that. It was UFC on Fox. So they were doing a UFC on Fox, and Stevens was on the main card. And Stevens wasn't even some huge draw and a huge deal. I mean, he was an up-and-comer back then, but he was exciting. He had a fan base, and he was promised that his match would be on Fox. Well, Jeremy ends up in jail. I can't remember what happened, but some, he gets put in handcuffs. I mean, they, they put him in holding, and I'm at Fox at the time. And so Fox sends out a big alert, you know, all through social media. Jeremy Stevens will not be on tonight's card. So Dana sees this, and Dana says, oh, yes, he will. This is my card. I am the one that promised the fans. I am the one that is going to deliver us to the fans. Yes, he will. So Dana tweets back, yes, he will. So then Fox comes back and says, this is a PR mess for Fox. This is, not, this is not what you would think about a card or, hey, it looks like Jeremy's busy and we're going to let the audience know. No, this was purely PR where Fox is going, hey, we can't take a guy from jail and put him on our network five hours later. We just can't. Dana's saying, not your call. Yes, you are. And they get in a back and forth on social media. And I'm there at, I mean, this was weird to the highest of levels. But, uh, okay, store that away. Jeremy ended up not fighting that night. He wasn't released. Store that away. Two weeks later, I'm talking to Rhonda. And Rhonda tells me the story of that night that she was with Dana. They were out wherever that card was. They were doing some level of business. Dana gets a phone call, has to stop everything he's doing, and he goes to the jail with her. So Dana walks in with like $150,000 in $100 bills and Rhonda Rousey and demands to see, <laughs> see the bailer. So however it worked, they didn't really know who Dana, they, like they weren't as impressed by that as you may think that they were at this time. This is all according to Ron. She said, yeah, you know, they don't really know who we were, but he's got a bag full of money. He says, give me my guy. I got a show to put on. That's my guy. And it ended up not working out. They didn't get him released or bail hadn't been set. Whatever the process was, Jeremy did not, not only did he not fight that night, but he wasn't even released. I don't have the conclusion to the story. It just reminds me of a really great story. And I have thought many times, like if you were a prison guard or you were a level, uh, a fan of any kind of level of the fight game and Dana and Rhonda come walking in the door with a bag full of hundreds, I got to think that's a, that's a moment you're going to go home and tell your wife about. Yeah.